Hi there. Today I'd like to talk to you about this. So you might ask yourself now, what exactly is that? So this is a chemo port, or let's be honest, a Venus access port. So thank you very much for watching this video. I've had lots of requests about when I'm doing some English videos on these breast cancer topics. And although I'm still busy finishing up the Afrikaans series, I will slowly start putting up some of these English videos as well. So if you want to be kept up to date, please subscribe to my channel and click the notification bell and we'll let you know as soon as new videos appear. So a chemotherapy port is an implantable device which is wholly placed under the skin so none of it sticks out and it can be used for any intravenous therapy doesn't matter what. The port itself consists of a reservoir component that is the area where the injection needle will be put in septum in front to allow the needle to go through and it's got a solid back which prevents the needle from going all the way through and it's got a cannula which is made of silicon or polyurethane which then connects the port reservoir to the vein that it lies in. So how are these chemotherapy ports placed? They are placed in a sterile environment like an operating theater and they're mostly done under either conscious sedation or a short general anesthetic, although they can be placed under local anesthetic only. Once the patient is comfortable, the skin is prepared using an antiseptic solution. An incision is made under the collarbone, usually in about the area where the bra strap would run. Once the incision is made, a space is developed under the skin for the reservoir to lie. Then a syringe is used with a needle that goes under the collarbone to find the axillary or the subclavian vein. That is the vein that connects the arm to the chest. Once the vein has been localized, a guide wire is placed through the needle into the vein and that acts as a placeholder so that the cannula can be placed into the vein. Once the cannula is placed, the position is confirmed with x-rays to ensure that the tip of the cannula is in the large vein just above the heart. Once that has been confirmed, the cannula is connected to the reservoir, which is sutured into its position under the skin. The skin itself is closed with an absorbable suture and a watertight dressing is placed on the wound. The patient usually goes home the same day. Some mild analgesia is usually required as the area does feel quite bruised and the dressing can generally be removed after three to five days. The wound itself generally does not require any specific care. So what is the difference between using a normal drip and the port for giving chemotherapy? Usually when chemotherapy is administered, a peripheral vein is used and a drip is placed usually on the forearm. The medication then runs through the vein up the arm where those veins join up to the deep venous system into the subclavian vein. The problem is that most of these agents are quite irritating to the vein wall, creating an inflammatory response followed by a fibrotic response, which means that the vein basically gets replaced by scar tissue. And you can imagine that at the end of a lengthy chemotherapy course, the patient might not have any veins left. A port is placed directly into the subclavian vein, and the tip of the cannula lies in the superior vena cava, which is a large vein just before the heart. That means when the chemotherapy exits the catheter, it is immediately washed away by the blood that flows from the upper body. That prevents the chemotherapy from, from irritating the vein and subsequently preserves the peripheral veins for later use. So when you have a chemotherapy port and you arrive at the treatment unit, the nurse will feel the bump of the chemotherapy port under the skin. The area will be cleaned with a sterile solution 
and a needle will be placed through the skin into the port reservoir. Once the needle is in position, the chemotherapy can be given, just like any other intravenous treatment. So, as with most things, there are some risks involved. Let's start at the time of placement. When the needle is placed under the collarbone to find the vein, there is a possibility that the apex of the lung could be punctured on that side. This is not a very common complication as the needle is quite thin and the lung generally does not get injured that easily. But should this happen, some air might leak out of the lung into the space between the lung and the rib cage. This is called a pneumothorax. If this does happen, it might require a drainage tube to be placed to drain away the air and allow the lung to expand fully. This can be an uncomfortable complication, but rarely very serious. The biggest concern we have with ports is generally infection or sepsis. If a port becomes septic, it does need to be removed. The biggest risk for port infection is generally within the first 7 days after placement and that can be as high as 18%. We therefore prefer that the ports not be used in the first week after placement and if necessary we would even sometimes use a peripheral vein for that first chemotherapy session. The infection risk diminishes after that but never goes away completely and should we need to remove the port for infection we can replace it with another one. The next complication is blockage of the port. Because the cannula lies within the bloodstream, some blood will enter the tip of the cannula. And when blood isn't flowing, it tends to want to clot. If a clot forms within the cannula, it will form a blockage, which then prevents the port from being used. We can unblock these ports, but then it is important that it does not stay that way for too long. We can use a drug called urokinase to unblock the port. In general, prevention is better than cure, and we flush the port with a heparin solution every time it's used to prevent this from happening. The next possible complication is where the vein where the port cannula enters becomes stenosed or narrowed and a clot develops in this area. This obviously would cause blockage of the vein, which in turn would cause swelling of the arm and the shoulder region. Fortunately, the arm has quite a good collateral drainage system and the swelling generally is just a temporary phase. The port will have to be removed and the patient will have to stay on an anti-clotting tablet. There are some other less frequent complications. One of them is when the port flips around. So instead of the front soft part being in front, it turns around and the hard impenetrable side goes, goes to the front. This prevents the port from being used. Fortunately, it is usually possible to flip the port back without doing any surgery, but occasionally revision surgery might be required. Another potential complication is when the cannula disconnects or break off from the port itself. In those cases, the cannula will have to be removed from the venous system. Fortunately, that is also possible without doing major surgery. So as we've discussed, ports can be very helpful in managing our patients and can certainly make life a lot easier. The there are lots of patients who never get offered the option of a port. And even if you have good veins, it is important to remember that you will need those veins for future treatments. It is my advice, therefore, to all my patients that they should consider the option of a port regardless of the status of their veins. It is less helpful to have completed three or four cycles of chemotherapy and then run out of veins requiring a port. If you find this video helpful and wish to join our community, please subscribe to my channel. If you'd like to be notified when new videos are available, you can click the notification bell and we'll let you know. I hope to speak to you again soon about a different topic on breast cancer. I hope you have a marvelous day.